All right, so hi. Welcome to a really exciting year of Chief Resident Dum Dum. Is that how you're going to say that, Chief Residency Dum? Dum. D O M, not D U M B. Welcome. I think today, part of what I'm talking about is going to be the stuff that is important that you're not going to hear a whole lot of. And so I don't have many slides because what I want us to do is talk. Most of you guys are sitting with your co-fellow residents. We need to talk about how we're going to keep ourselves well. I don't have any disclosures. I'm under the law to put that. And these are the things we're going to look at today. We're going to look and define and discuss wellness. What is it? What's it look like? What's it not look like? We're going to look at some barriers to balance and wellness for you chief residents. You guys have barriers to wellness that are unique to other residents that are out there. We're going to do some discussions and I'm going to stop a lot of times and have two minutes for you to discuss and then I might have you stand up and shout out some of your answers just so we know. And then we're going to talk about some stepping stones for integrating more wellness for you guys. You have to stay well because you guys lead the team, you set the tone. And if you have neglected your own wellness, your residents are also falling apart under you and it doesn't look well. And so we're gonna talk a lot right now about the balance for you guys. Just so you know, I've been doing wellness for about 20 years now and Osler says, when you have the opportunity to talk about something, you should only talk about those things that you are passionate about. I am passionate about resident wellness. When I got hired for my job about 14 years ago, there wasn't all this talk about wellness. I was hired for residency life and remediation. And so while we were looking at it, and it has a different title, you should know that now the entire world of residency learning is based upon how well you guys are doing. They don't want any more residents killing themselves. They don't want any more residents, residents falling off of the grid. And so the stuff we talk about sometimes in my residency, they hate it. They want to talk about chest pain or you guys want to talk about scheduling, all these other things. But if we don't talk about it, it's not a priority. So you look at my conclusion slide in 30 minutes and you will know that that first thing says you got to make wellness a priority and the first slide also says the same thing. So that's why it's worth talking about today. I want you to listen, I want you to interact, and I want you to figure out what this looks like for you because it looks different for everybody. So let's talk for a minute, what is your greatest fear about chief, being chief resident? Somebody want to stand up and give me some answers quickly and loudly, go. You guys are chiefs, come on, make it happen, quickly. Not being able to satisfy everybody's wants and needs. What else? Conflict resolution. Over commitment. Nobody got a significant other at home? Anybody got kids at home? Concur. You ask chiefs what they had to give up because everybody has to give up something to be chief resident and you have to decide on the list. What is it? Is it studying? Is it some of your research? Is it that you're not going to be at the top anymore? It's a great fear. Anybody else? So we did this. I did this talk a couple years ago and people worried that they were going to gain weight because they wouldn't have time to exercise anymore and that was very important to them. We have concerns about significant other and relationships going through drama because as much as I will tell you to put barriers around your life, the barriers are crossed very much because being chief, especially in emergency medicine, I wish it was a nine to five. Trust me, it's not a nine to five. It is a year. So let's try again. What do you think wellness is? Who knows what wellness is and who practices wellness and who's got a great wellness thing going on at their program? Anybody out here doing good wellness stuff? Y 
Y'all are the quietest group of chiefs I ever met. So it's giving you time. So what's the definition? What, what, is, what does wellness mean to you? You know how to treat it. You've got things going on. What does wellness mean? Refilling your cup. Refilling your cup. Explain. They're giving you an eyeball over here. What does that mean? You guys understanding what she's saying, the emotional cup? Great. Thank you very much, med student people. I appreciate you. Um, I'm double booked for talks right now. I didn't realize they changed the schedule. That's why you see me running back and forth. Um, so what else does residency mean besides your emotional cup? What else does, does wellness mean, especially wellness in residency? Anybody got a definition? Go ahead, sir, really loud. Uh, finding, fulfillment. finding fulfillment in what you do. Anybody else? So we talk a lot about wellness, but we don't really have a good definition of what that means. Why is that? Yes, I agree with that. What I need for my wellness I need some house plants that I like. I like to bounce off my stress, Zumba. I'm at Zumba six times a week, trying to make sure that my balance is correct because I'm trying to fill my emotional cup. But I do think it looks different for everyone. It kind of looks a little bit like balance. And so if you look at this, wellness looks like balance. It's individualized, it's fluid. There's no such thing as work-life balance. At any one time, the cup or the scale or whatever have you is pulled a little bit heavier. So if you're a chief resident, that might be the heaviest thing on you until your kid needs a tonsillectomy. And then that goes up and your family priority is going to be down. And so it depends on what's going on. So it's fluid every single day. You will have work and non-work responsibilities. You need to be energized and productive when you are well and when you're not well what does that look like you have to define the priorities for you nobody else can do that it's part of being an individualized process we want to optimize your personal and professional growth like this gentleman was talking about and much thought i think is wellness is kind of defined by its absence right so you know when you're not well so what we talk about in orientation, which is what I want you guys to talk to your fellow chiefs about, everybody needs to come up with three items. What do you look like, sir, when you're not well? Very tired. Tired. Grumpy. Grumpy. Something, right? So I want you guys to talk with your co-chiefs right now because they need to know your warning signs. So can we please spend three minutes coming up with the things that you need to tell your coaches? like, when I am not well, I'm tired, I'm grouchy, I'm gaining weight, I'm losing weight, all of it. Go ahead. Three items they can write down about you, three items. doing fine. It's hard because I want them to stand up and just participate. They're tired and want lunch right now and so it's kind of that thing. So I'm just going to sit next to 
sorry, would you like us to rush over? And you can. Out? It's yeah. hard. You got some. Let me know, see how sorry. high them shoes on. Girl, you look cute, though. but why you got them I high know. heel shoes? On? I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll try to yeah, do the right. best you can do, but uh, yeah, well, you guys are doing fine. If we get protracted discussion, then you can get the mic to them because they'll still be talking. If it's just like stand up and tell me three words, don't bother. Everybody in your group got three words about you. What are her three things that she doesn't look well at? What are her three? She's going to get withdrawn. What else? And what about for you? What are, her, are you in the room house too? Oh, so what are her triggers? What do you look like when you're not well? Do these ladies know? Um, she is sleepy. She does um, not exercise as much. So that's a bad thing. And then she can't her room. That's how we can tell things are going awry. Your room becomes a disaster. Okay, everybody have three words they know about each person in their chief team? Everybody got three words, three sentences. You now know the warning signs. Yes? Yeah, All right, I think it's important. What do we look like when we're not well? Because if we can't define what it looks like when we're all sitting in a room talking about it, if the least we can do is that our neighbors know what our signs look like, whether I know she's upset if her room becomes messy, that means she's falling off the grid a little bit, or whether somebody else gets really sleepy and really grumpy, which seems to be a, a, a trigger for a lot of you guys. When you're getting overwhelmed, you actually um, get tired and you don't communicate well. So I think of all the stuff we talked today, Knowing the problems of what your co-teammates have is probably one of the most important things. Because if you don't know when somebody's falling off the grid, we're going to get in trouble. So there is this balancing act, right? Chiefdom, family, however that's defined, whether it's pets, whether it's friends, whether you have a significant other and children at home. With residency, this is what we need to try to figure out. So this is another one where what do you think of the stuff that you've heard about this morning and the stuff that you have heard from your chiefs that you took over from, which is in process right now? What do you think are the challenges and the issues that are specific to you in your chief residency role? How about you, loudly? You guys are chiefs. I'm going to call on you. Uh, I'm a people pleaser. So it's a challenge. So, right? She's a people pleaser. Who else? Go ahead, my sweet, loudly. Making sure that the other residents are well informed of what's happening. Transparency. It's an issue. New leadership. New Department. leadership. Huge answer. Yes. Setting boundaries. Setting boundaries. It's a problem unique to chiefs you guys are on, especially in EM 24-7. What else? Anybody here have to run for chief? Or were you appointed by Congress? Anybody here have to run for chief? Anybody here run against their friends and you won and they didn't? What, what's going to change in that relationship? Anybody here have to bring their significant other to talk to the chiefs because their significant other wasn't going to understand the time commitment that chiefdom has? Dr. Rigotti, yes, absolutely. So I, I'm just sharing only because I know what his wife said was 
Where is he going to do his chief work? I will understand that he's got to cover emergency call. My children, my three-year-old and my four-year-old, won't understand why daddy is home and daddy is disengaged. Is that a challenge? Anybody else got kids? Yeah. You have to think about it now. So in here, you guys are in medical mode, but I want you to really stop and think, what is chiefdom going to do to your life? What's it going to do to your friendships? What's it going to do to some of those things that we have planned? Um, I have seen friendships flourish. I've seen new friends that needed to be made. I've also seen, how about um, scheduling and friends? Where's the boundary? What's the line? Dude, we've been friends for a long time. You're going to get me two weekends off a block, right? Nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. Right? <laughs> so, so there's a line there. But your friends who have been your friends for the last two years, they're not going to understand that, that part of your friendship cannot translate into the job that you do for chief residency. And it will make you uneasy. You'll be a little bit sad that your friends can't be your friends the way they used to be. And you're also a little bit sad that your new best friends, honestly, for this year are who? Good people sitting at the table with you. They become your wife, your husband, your friend, your bestie, your nurse, your doctor, your counselor. You guys are with the people that will understand some of the items that are specific to you. It's a hardship a little bit. Why is there murmur? Do you guys, he, as we are sitting here thinking, are you guys thinking of some additional challenges that maybe being a chief might bring? Yeah? What else? Somebody at this table. You guys are close. Good chatter. Well, yes, my sweet. What's another issue? I think managing your clinical issues. Go ahead. Man managing your clinical role and then the chief roles that we have to fill. That's huge. You guys are chiefs. You're supposed to be really great in the department and not from your fellow, fellow residents. But my faculty, they're looking at you to be clinically strong. And you got scheduling to do. And you haven't picked up a book and you skipped a couple of sim sessions. And all of a sudden, you don't know the latest research on whether you should use epi or not. It's a challenge because you are doing what you need to do for your chiefdom, but maybe you're no longer at the top of your game clinically. Think about it now so that you can put a strategy into place so that doesn't happen. But you should just know there are items and issues that are really specific to a small subset of residents, you guys in this room. Was that a hand up? Okay. She's like, no, I was fixing my hair. So here's some competing demands, significant others, personal needs. So you've got, you've got a family at home. You've got a ton of demands with chiefdom. Your residents are having a beer party, and you would like one hour to go home and play video games in your underwear. Who gets to schedule that? Because it's time that you need, right? How are you going to make that happen? It's a competing demand. Research and academic problems. You guys supposedly are very interested in how academics works. And I would like to think that if you're going to be in charge of a residency, that you've got some gains on being able to use the skills that you build this year for later on. Anybody here actively doing research? Raise your hands high, actively doing research. So it's not everybody, but it is some of you. And those that are not, is there an expectation that this year you are supposed to do some? Yes. And for those of you guys who are actively doing it, are you at the beginning, middle, or end? And where are you going to find the time to put into the research that you're supposed to be doing? Teaching, 
So you guys are supposed to be at lectures, but I know at my program, if we've got residents that are behind, who's supposed to be helping them get caught up? This guy, this lady, right? So you guys have some extra stuff. You'll hear from faculty, hey, got a resident that needs a buddy. Would you like to be able to talk over some cases with them? They're not doing really well in their charting. We really want somebody to sit down with them. That comes to the chiefs. It comes to the chiefs. You are also required to help out with the medical students. You're required morning report. I think every program is a little bit different, but every program has some increased demands of your teaching time, which should be something you like to do. And then there's scheduling. How many people know that they are going to fall in the hole when it's their turn to do schedules? So I, I see a lot of hands. Scheduling, my God, it, it, it is hours a day of trying to get everybody happy and well. And if everybody is allowed three requests and you can make two of them, great. If you can only make one of them, why? And if you make all three for 45% of the people and the other 55% only get two, how is that fair? How do you keep it up? You're now the enemy because you didn't give me my brother's birthday off, even though I asked, and we used to be friends. It's a competing demand. Scheduling is huge. It's one of the things that we'll talk about a little bit later today, but you need to be on committees. You need to show your dividing and devising leadership, and you've got scheduling to do. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit of a story. A monk, a priest, and a minister were out in the boat, and they're fishing. And the monk says, hey, I think we need some coffee to, to find morning. Let's go in here. And so he gets out on the boat and walks upon the water and goes and gets back in the boat. He's brought coffee. Well, then the Catholic priest said, well, to go with this lovely coffee, I think we need some bagels. And so... He gets out of the boat, he walks across the water, comes back, he's now got bagels for everybody. And so the minister said, hey, I'm holy, and I think that we need some cream cheese and jam to go with these bagels. And so he's like, well, they did it. So he gets out of the boat, and he takes two steps and falls under the water. And they pull him back up in the boat. And he's like, I don't understand. I want to walk on the water just like you guys. What happened? And they say, oh, my brother, you did not know where the stepping stones were, right? So what we're going to do now is go over what the stepping stones look like so you guys stay afloat for your whole residency. Yeah, y'all yeah, thought I was going somewhere really crazy with that, but it couldn't be too far. So, personal stepping stones. Now we're talking about the things that you need to pay attention to because these are the strategies to keep you well. So, you need to make wellness a priority. If you don't make it a priority for you, for your co-residents, and for your program, it will get forgotten. And so, yes, some programs already have some things. There's some retreats and personal time. There might be food, there might be opportunities for counseling, but you as chief residents are responsible for the wellness of the program. So you need to make sure you're keeping it a priority. I think keeping fit is a really important thing. And though everybody, again, has an individual need, your diet, exercise, and sleep, you have to figure out ways to excel at doing that so that you can pass them down. And so I would hope that when you are meeting with your fellow co-chiefs, that part of what you're talking about involves a plan for you all to stay well, because that plan's not going to be the same for everyone, but everybody should be able to have that as a priority so people can pay attention to it. You're going to have to get some calendars, whether it's Google Hangout, whether it's a calendar on a refrigerator door, there has to be some coordination 
between your chiefdom and your family. So at some point, you've got to set some boundaries. So in my program, when there's a problem and it is on the chief's tiger text, we are going back and forth and I'm talking, okay, well, who's going to go address this and who's going to let the university know and who's going to make sure that this person is well and they're going to call the medicine chiefs that are coordinating. There is the potential that one of my four chiefs was post overnight. And when they wake up and they see that they missed 60 texts and then they're all sad because they missed the emergency. And then they call and say, Dr. Price, I'm sorry, I just woke up. What can I do? Do you want me to jump in the fray? And I'm like, no. If we know that they are on overnight, we ghost them. We do. We're like, oh, Katie was overnight, so let's not use our chiefs. We're just going to create a new feed that we are using today for this program. So those 60 deans are not going to go through to her phone. And so her chiefs are really instrumental in saying, hey, I know you guys don't know everybody's individual schedule, but I know that she was overnight at a different hospital, and so we need to ghost her. You have to set some boundaries. You guys went into this chiefdom because you want to do stuff and you want to handle the emergencies. And the emergencies are a little bit fun for whatever they happen to be. They take a lot of energy. Sometimes they're horrible and sometimes it's stuff that's not too serious, but it still is stuff that that's why you got into the game because you want to be able to help. But you also need to know where to set the boundaries. And so when you guys are at your tables later on, you will have to figure out how to set the boundaries. Whether somebody's always looking at the schedule, we have an unspoken rule that that chief resident who is doing scheduling, they are not involved with any of the emergency stuff for that three months because they've got three other chiefs and the person who's doing the scheduling is buried doing scheduling. If you're doing scheduling, you're covering the emergency call outs, you're trying to sort through three different hospitals, your job's done for those three months. That is all you can handle and we divide up enough stuff. And so the reason we have more than one program at each table is so you guys can hear things like that and try to figure out an equal distribution of work so that you can figure out the appropriate ways to set boundaries. Does that make sense? Anybody got any questions or want to tell us about some boundaries they might have or might plan? Let me see my married people one more time. Married significant other. What is the plan, sir, you have in place to protect your relationship during your chiefdom? Wait, give him a microphone. Come on. <laughs> there you go. What is the plan? So, yeah, my wife and I have actually talked about this. We have three, sorry, a three-year-old and a six-month-old. Um, which is super fun. She's also an ER nurse. So um, we're going to sit down and kind of plan out child coverage. Uh, we already planned a pre-planning meeting, um, and we're going to figure everything out. And next year, I have my parents come down and her parents come down, and when we know it's going to be a heavier time of the year. Yeah. So are you guys hearing what he's saying? What's the P word that he used? Plan. Please don't think that it's just going to happen, that the boundaries around your marriages around your parenting and around your significant others are just going to come. You have to make a plan. Who else has a plan already devised? Do you have a plan? Our, so I have a fiance and his schedule fortunately is much easier to work around but our basic weekly plan will be at least one night if I'm not on nights he will help with dinner and groceries, and then I'll do the rest of the household stuff that needs to get done. But just that way we'll do some of it together, see each other, have dinner, and both of us will be happy because one less thing will be on our plate. So we'll just contribute that way. It's a plan. You have to make a plan now. It will all fall apart if you do not. So while your chiefs are still here for the next five, six, seven weeks, Take this time where you are getting up to speed as a baby chief, that's what y'all are, your baby chiefs, so that you can make a plan. 
It might just be a plan for somebody to keep your dog twice a week because you're going to be inundated. Was that a hand up back in the back? Okay. Yes, I got one up over here. Where the pursuit of this goal of wellness in and of itself becomes something that makes people unwell. And, you know, that is something I think I've, I'm the one who's supposed to be responsible for figuring that out this year. And I would love your input, anybody else's input about how do you keep it, how do you keep the intention, the, the thing that is the focus and not create more things for people to have to go to, more things to feel bad about missing. And I think that that is almost inevitably how some people feel. So. Go ahead. So when you talk about, again, that balance, there is no such thing as work-life balance. The scale is never equally balanced. I think the most important thing to do is to keep it as a priority, knowing that it is 100% not achievable for 100% of the time. I am a happy person. I'm pretty balanced. I do a lot of wellness stuff, not only for the residency, but for my whole entire health care system. And yet, one of our trauma doctors killed themselves. How does that make me feel as a success in my job? Well, dang, what did I miss? I'm so horrible. I crawl inside myself sometime to figure out why did I fail? What happened? What did I miss? And while it didn't have anything to do with me, it had everything to do with me. And what I have to sit around and figure out was, I can't be 100% of the time on, right? Despite my job, despite that part of my salary, things happen. And so if you keep wellness as a priority for yourself and your program and your hospital and whatever other fields you play in, I think that's a lot of the best you can do. But a lot of it also is planning. And I think sometimes we just think people are going to be well. So just because we are well in emergency medicine didn't extend to 20 feet down the hall where the trauma offices were. And although we talked to each other a lot and had a good time, there was clearly something amiss that I missed. That he was so upset that he took upon himself on a cold night to go end his life. And so while we are thinking and talking about this, it's heavy stuff, right? this pursuit of wellness and staying happy. But I think if we don't plan it, it's definitely not going to happen. And so I would say try and strive, knowing that it's not 100% achievable, but making the effort. Any other questions? All right, some more stones. So I think probably managing the time. You guys get some instruction on time management. But I think everybody for themselves before you meet with your co-chiefs, before you meet with your residency leadership, you need to already have that internal compass of a list that says, these are my priorities. Because if you start chiefdom and you have a significant other, but your priorities are, I want to be the best chief resident I can be, I'm not quite sure you're coming about this at the right place. Because if I were a resident, I would be like, the most important thing is to make sure my marriage survives intact my last year before I have to find a job or a fellowship and go somewhere on to the next step. That might be number one. And then my chiefdom might be number two. And then my research might be number three. Or you might be a bodybuilder. And so you might be like, I want to be a great chief, but I also want to go to four bodybuilding competitions. And that's my priority. Everybody's list is going to look a little bit differently, but you need to have that list before you sit down with your co-residents and decide where to draw the lines around the priority. You guys have to learn some great interpersonal skills. We do pretty well at my hospital. We've got um, four chiefs, and usually there's an academic chief. There's uh, one that helps with activities and one that is so touchy-feely and just is a great hugger and 
makes people feel loved, and then one person is super anal and is great at doing the schedule and all that kind of stuff. We are looking at all of those different things so that the amalgam of my chief as a whole can fill all of those. But learning interpersonal skills, learning how to figure out who's going to be the one that says, okay, well, I'm not really a hugger, but I'll go over and give that person a hug. Because if you got four chiefs and none of them are huggers, somebody might have to take the plunge and learn how to put two arms around people. Um, so you might have to adjust who you are, your interpersonal skills. I think you guys, if you use the power of humor, will find it works a little bit better. Um, a couple of days ago, I was in the department. I saw one of my residents. I said, give me your hand. Give me your hand. I love you. I am so happy that your conference attendance is going to allow you to spend some extra time at our residency. I appreciate you showing me your love that way. Thank you. Have a nice day. Then I let go of his hand and walked away. Do you think that person got the message? Did I deliver it with a smile on my face? Yes. Was I dead serious? Yeah. I'm getting ready to add three weeks to his schedule right now. So I just think using humor makes it come across. There's no malice. We're going to talk about this a little bit more. You can't take anything personally this year. You are fulfilling a function of a role that is really difficult. You can't take it personally. They're mad. Person mad at me because they can't go to senior skip day because they didn't keep up with their conference attendance. Yes, that is my fault. I said, yes, I'm sorry, it's my fault, but that's just the way it is. Because they're looking at me, and I'm like, you put yourself in that situation, not me. But I'm willing to take it on, yes, because I think that they think I want to take it personally. I don't take it personally. Be the duck with the oil on the feathers. Just let it roll on off, because you've got to get up and smile for every other person that is still relying on you. I want you guys to look beyond yourself. Rely on your co-chiefs and residency leadership. So... How many, how many of you already, it was not me, thank you. How many of you already have a plan for when your chiefs meet? Do you have scheduled meetings already? By yourselves, just the chiefs? Yes or no? I'm seeing a lot of no's. Oh, wow. So that's another P, right? So my residents, they meet for PEC, but then uh, one Friday night a month, they sit down amongst them and they have dinner together so they can figure out who's doing well, who is checking in, and who is figuring out what the next step is going to be for Chiefdom. Put that on your schedule. It's a great thing to have some personal time to put it together. Um, mold your environment. If there are things the residency can do to enhance your chiefdom or your wellness, make sure they know that. If you guys want to retreat, ask for a retreat. If you need a, an office and you don't have one, so we didn't need an office, we needed a lactation room. And so we decided that we were going to change the chief's office into half lactation room and half chief's office. How do you think that worked out? Well, it was a little sticky, but we left it that way because we needed to. You guys need to have a plan for an emergency. Everybody needs a role. If there's something catastrophic that happens, you need to plan for that now. You guys need to earn respect. I already talked about this. Don't take it personally. Let go. All of you ran on the platform that said you were going to change the schedule and make it 10 times better for every single resident. I know what your speech sounded like because I heard it 49,000 times. Yes? Let that go. You can't change the schedule just like you think you can and give everybody four shifts in a month. It just is not going to happen. So right now, you need to start figuring out what you need to let go of. You might need to alter that promise, but you might need to let it go a little bit. You need to delegate. You need to create a personal inventory. Are you getting to where you want to be? You need to set down your goals on black and white so that as you are chief, sir, you can figure out how to make sure you're getting to where you need to be. Um, ask for help. It's not a sign of weakness. I want the chief to come to me with a problem and say, this is the problem we have. Can you help me? 
um, this is just a couple of things. Don't feel guilty about getting help. All right, get a dog cleaner. If you can scrounge up $50, get somebody to come clean your apartment once a month. Um, order those, you know, meals that come in a box at all so you don't have to go to the grocery store. Do everybody a favor. Figure out where you can get help. Make sure you are keeping in touch with your previous chiefs. They will most likely have a lot to share. And you are the ambassadors, not only for your program. I already heard Matt talking about what's the flavor of your program. But you are the ambassadors. So make, that, make yourself worthy of the title by being the best you that you can be. Whether you're the best hugger, or you're the best ITE taker, or you're the best scheduler, you need to make yourself the best you can be. So in conclusion, you need to give yourselves a hand for being chief, because I don't know why anybody would do it. It's a lot of work, so enjoy the honor. Develop a system for checking in. Demonstrating the ability to maintain your own wellness is responsible and respectable. Work on your balance, not 100% achievable all the time, but still a goal. And have fun. You guys have fun this year. Chiefdom is a lot of fun. And so the, despite the fact that I told you it was going to be a challenge to your wellness, uh, laugh a lot, have a lot of joy. Welcome to a really difficult year. I'm in the program. If I can help you guys out with something, please let me know. There's a couple of things up here, peer assistance. If you guys need stuff, online resources are great for the chiefs. A lot of you will be in GroupMe. Um, LIM has a group where you can pay $100 or $200 and join a think tank of chiefs for this year. Get your programs to sign up for that. Use EAP if things are going too far down the road. If you're not well, your residents are not going to be well. And balance, balance, balance. Thank you very much.